Ben Mulroney talks about International Guide Dog Day, the logo for CNIB Guide Dog. Hi, Diane. Great to talk to you. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Nice to hear you again. Uh, so uh, before we move on to anything about CNIB, how has life been for you in quarantine? You know, I have to admit, for me, it hasn't been too bad. Um, CNIB has been providing a lot of online and virtual programs, but I also have all of my training equipment at home. So I have been happily training and uh, getting myself fit again for racing whenever that comes up again. But it, it, my biggest part is I'm sad that I don't get to go fly to Edmonton to see my daughter. That was my, my one thing. You know, I think that's a, a universal feeling that, um, yeah. of missing our family. But I also think that you touched on something that's universal to everyone as well, which is this need to have structure in a day uh, during this pandemic that is rife with a lack of structure. Yes, absolutely. I find, yeah. I find the, fir the first two weeks of this pandemic, I was, and the first two weeks of the quarantine, I was floating in the ether tethered to nothing and because of that <laughs> I, I didn't know which way was up I didn't know what time of day it was and I found the more little things that I put in my schedule the better I felt yeah and yeah. and this this conversation I, I has been one of those for me yeah I've been doing online we've even had a family happy hour um, reunion kind of session on uh, uh, through video chats and anything to keep the family together and keep some kind of semblance of connection to the rest yeah. of the world. And, uh, and I've, like I said, I've been doing my, my fitness classes and stuff all over video conferencing. So as long as I stick to that, I think I'll, I'll come out at the other end pretty good. So, but I do feel for those people that don't have that same structure and those same uh, opportunities. I, I completely relate. I completely understand. Um, okay, so we're recording this uh, two days before uh, International Guide Dog Day. Uh, yes. So, which means that a lot of people are going to be uh, listening to this after uh, International Guide Dog Day. But let's talk about it for a moment. Uh, because you have been a dog handler for uh, with 35 years. This has been part of your life yeah. for a very long time. Yeah, we're going to tell me you, yeah. I was two when I got my first dog, okay? So when you were two? Uh, we're going to say that, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but talk to me about why International Guide Dog Day is so important. I can tell you that uh, I was there for a graduation ceremony uh, for guide dogs. Uh, and so it, I felt how important those dogs are to the people uh, in their lives. But uh, why don't you tell everybody, why is, why is International Guide Dog Day such an important day? You know, I think it's important because despite the fact that guide dogs have been officially and formally around since the mid to late 1920s, there's still a lot of misunderstanding about the need for the dogs, what the dogs do, and the importance of the dogs towards independence and freedom for people who are blind and partially sighted. Mm -hmm. So having an international day to get the world to understand that these dogs do such a critical role in helping people with sight loss lead the lives they want to lead, go to work, go to school, have families, just getting around. It's so important. And so I think that um, making sure that we have that knowledge out there and getting people to understand that is so important on this particular day. So what, um, on, on March, uh, April 29th, on International Guide Dog Day, what would be, if you had a wish list, if you could talk to every Canadian and, and, and tell them one or two things about International Guide Dog, or about guide dogs and why um, uh, talking about it and thinking about it and, opening our eyes and our hearts to it is an important thing. What, what would you tell them? Wow. You don't like to ask the easy questions, do you, Ben? <laughs> I, I, do the, I paint with a very broad brush, Diane. <laughs> you know what? I think what I'd like Canadians to understand is that these dogs are more than just a pet that we like to have with us. These dogs are a, an extension of our bodies. To me, when people tell me I can't take my dog into a restaurant, it's like telling somebody else, you can't bring in your eyes or you yeah. can't bring in your arms or, you know, this is, 
this is so important to my life. And these dogs are professionally trained. They're specifically bred. They, you know, the handlers are trained to maintain them. We need to have access. Without access, our lives are so dependent on others. And, you know, we want to be strong contributing members of society. And every time we get refused access into a public place, Onto, into public transportation, into restaurants. Every time that happens, it's diminishing our ability to be good contributing members into our society. So if I could say the important thing is, please just let us do what we need to do and just let us go and, and show you what these dogs are capable of doing under the handling skills of people who are blind. You've been in this world for 35 years. I have to assume there have been some advances. I have to assume that to a certain extent, people's minds uh, have opened up. But how much better is life today for someone with a, a guide dog versus, say, 10 years ago? You know, I, I would like to say that we no longer get refused access. I would like to say that it's, you know, 100% better. I can't say that. What I can say is that I think that the knowledge is, uh, the public education and knowledge is better. Um, but I think that what people tend to do is focus on the dog as opposed to focusing in on what does having that dog give the person the ability to do. Right. And so I think that's where the public education needs to go. And I think I think we're starting to see that. We're starting to see public places saying, well, if we let that person in with that dog, then they're going to be able to do this, this, and this, as opposed to we just don't want a dog in here. So there is a switch going in that direction, but I think we need to push it even further. All right. So, uh, and, and that is kind of one of the reasons we want to have this chat. We want to put it out there. We want people to start having these conversations or rather continue having these conversations. But what I love is International Guide Dog Day is April 29th, but yeah. it sort of launches the pup crawl, which goes yeah. on for far longer than that. And I think this is a really cool initiative. So why don't you tell everybody what the pup crawl is, which is the best name for any initiative ever. <laughs> Great. Right? Yeah, it's so the pup crawl is um, is an idea that we just came up with. It was uh, we were starting to feel the the um, isolation and thinking that you know all these people are not able to go out and do some of the things that they wanted to do. But there's so many things you can do right within your own neighborhood, your own house, in your own yard. And you know if you have an entire month to do a five kilometer, you can do that walking back and forth in your, in your house. So we decided that we were going to um, have an event that you can do in your own home or in your own yard and, and where you are following the rules, of course, of uh, mm -hmm. the Canadian um, health organizations and, and have a virtual um, event and let's all stay active and have something to focus on other than the drudgery of just staying home. So that's what it came up. We decided to do it. You can walk it, you can run it, you can crawl it, you can dance, jump, hula hoop. We don't care what it is. Just do the equivalent of five kilometers. And, um, and it's all on the honor system. And it's to raise money for such a fantastic cause because it's going to get more guide dogs to Canadians who need them across the country. Okay, so I, I have a few questions for you, Diane. One, do you, okay. need a dog, do you need a dog to do the pup crawl? You do not need a dog to do the pup crawl. Okay. Um, however, if you do have a dog that you would like to do it with, um, our race bib that we have designed has a place when you register, you can register yourself, you can put your dog's name on there, and it will be on the bib along with yours if you have one, but it is not required. Okay, I see, because I've now decided I'm doing this I'm going to do it over the weekend. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, sort of fashion a five kilometer uh, lovely walk for me and my kids and our new dog, Bruce Wayne. And I think uh, um, I might even call my best friend who might be along the route. And what I might do is, because uh, I haven't seen my friend or his son in a long time, I might, even, all while honoring social distance, I might maybe hook the, the, the leash up on his doorstep and then 
he can take the dog and then we can all walk together all while maintaining social distance uh, and he can do part of it with us. Um, Absolutely. This is, a, this is a wonderful idea. Um, it, uh, let, let's, let's go back to, because yes, I'm going to register. I'm going to, uh, I think it's a $30 registration fee. Yeah, $30 um, registration fee, yes. You, ta you take your pictures, you use the, the social media tags, um, yeah. and, uh, and it's a very easy way to contribute. But talk to me about how much does it cost to train one of these, one of these dogs, and how long does it take? So CNIV, um, for our dogs, we say it's approximately $50,000 for the lifetime of the dog because we get our dogs from a reputable breeder um, that is, they're specifically bred for this, for this purpose. And then they go to puppy raisers or foster home late homes for a year uh, to 15 months. And then they come in and they do formal training with our guide dog mobility instructors. We got fabulous trainers that train the dogs. And that takes between four and six months to get a dog ready to go to be trained with their handler. And then once they're handed off to the handler, they get their training in. The handler, it now takes them six months to a year before they become a really good working bonded team together. Yeah. But CNIB, um, we don't stop at handing them the dog. <clears throat> Excuse me, we don't stop at handing them the dog. At CNIB, we also provide, the, we pay for the cost of all of the dog's vet bills and their food for the life of the dog. So it makes sure that no Canadian has to go without a guide dog because of financial barriers. And we take care of that dog for its entire life. So that's why it costs uh, $50,000 for the dog. So all that to say, it, 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 it's a significant cost. Mm -hmm. um, uh, which is why this pup crawl is going on for, uh, I think, almost a month, right? Yes, we're, we're yes. Uh, April 29th to May 29th. You have the entire month to get your five kilometers in in whatever way works best for you. So, yeah, so people don't have to rush out. They can pick the dates. They can maybe even do it a couple of times, you know, Make get in your steps. Yep. They could yep. do it a couple of times. But I think it's important to note that, um, that, that these dogs, as you said, it, they don't just offer companionship and uh, they don't just help someone get from point A to point B. They help them um, l live the, the, the most productive, truest expression of themselves. And, uh, and, 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 and I, I, I can't speak to this, so you'll have to speak to this, but I have to assume that with the help of a properly trained guide dog, a Canadian can, uh, a, a, you know, a, a person with sight loss uh, can be more productive, they can, uh, they can um, be more effective at their jobs, which then in turn turns that cost of, um, of training the dog, not into a cost, but into an investment. I would say absolutely. If a dog is the right thing for you, um, you know, obviously if you're not a dog lover, it might not be the best, <laughs> the best option mm -hmm. as, a, as a mobility aid for you. But people that, that have guide dogs, you know, I, I've, I've, always said i went from my cane to a dog and that was it i said i'm never going to be without a dog and a lot of the guide dog handlers i know feel exactly the same once you've gotten into the freedom of going with a dog and the safety i mean i have i have been safe every single one of my dogs over the years at least five or six times during the time that i've had them has stopped me from getting hit by a car fallen down off of a um, you know, into a, a construction area. They've saved my life so many times. It's a safety mm. feature. I, yeah. They are my life and I can't, I can't put any kind of value on that financial. It's, it's my entire world. Well, I just hope that uh, anybody who sees this video and thinks to themselves, you know, the weather's getting nicer. We should get outside, take advantage, sign up and for $30, uh, go out, have fun with the, uh, your puppy or your kids or your friends at a distance. Uh, walk those five kilometers. Do it a few times. Get your steps in. Get get some healthy outdoor activity and help the CNIB and help this really really valuable cause. Because as I said, it is it's an investment in our fellow Canadians. It's a, an investment in our neighbors yeah. and our friends and our family. So yeah. Diane, thank you very much. I hope that your training goes well for your running. Uh, do you do you um, do you do like real like, actual races do you run um uh, in in any sort of uh charitable races and stuff like that 
Yeah, I run, I run in several races and I compete at, um, in triathlon. So I've done right up to Ironman competitions. Oh, come on. Come on. Now yeah. you're making me feel bad about myself. I think, <laughs> you, I think you should guide me in a triathlon sometime, Ben. I think we should do that. Well, listen, uh, that is, let, let's, let's put that as a goal for the future. But in the interim, if you need it, <laughs> if, if there's any way that I can sponsor one of your runs, I would love to. Uh, but I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind exploring the, the um, sort of helping you uh, as a guide for, for the running. I could, I could get the exercise. I could use it. it you could be my guide runner someday when we're left. And you know, when you were talking about sponsoring, I would be remiss without mentioning that we do have an opportunity for mm -hmm. people, if they choose, to get pledges for the puck crawl. Uh, the top three fundraisers will have the opportunity to name a future guide dog, a future I CNN. That. Oh, yeah. that's great. Diane, so that is fantastic. If you get a lot of sponsors, one might be named Ben in the future. <laughs> God help that dog. Uh, <laughs> Diane, thank you so much. Uh, I, ho I hope the quarantine is treat treating you well. I hope that you and your family, even though you're, you're apart, I hope that you are uh, happy and healthy. And, and I hope to see you again soon. Great. Thank you very much. Take care and stay healthy, Ben. Bye-bye. Learn more about CNIB Guide Dogs by visiting cnib.ca slash guide dogs, the logo for CNIB Guide Dogs.